right, so here are a few of the key pieces. Uh, we keep them cold and submerged in water to try to deter um, bacterial and fungal growth. Yep. You can see that it's, if you can see it in kind of profile, this way or this way, you can see that it's rounded on one side and flat on the bottom. Or, well, whether it's top or bottom, we don't really know for sure. And then we have these um, little appendages that come out. This one is broken off. Um, and we have no idea what the function of these pieces of wood was, but there, we have, I think, six or seven of them right now. And I'm sure that if we, when we have the chance to excavate this site more fully, then others are going to come up. So you get, again, you have these appendages, the other two are broken off, but it's quite clearly flat on one side and rounded on the other. And they're all about the same length, about the same width. So whether this was possibly for a platform, because um, at Star Car, the very famous earlier Mesolithic site here in Britain, they also have some of these um, kinds of timbers, uh, which they've interpreted as possibly a dock, um, where the, they built a, a sort of platform or um, a dock where log boats could have been tied in the marshlands. So. You can see this one is starting to develop a bit of a, this black is, a, is related to uh, bacterial growth. So we need to change the water and uh, get some fresh water into these to try to keep them preserved before we get them over to the Mary Rose Museum for conservation. This one I think is really interesting because while well, you can see that the ends of it are broken off, but right here, this is what I suspect to be a ligature mark um, where these, if they were planks that were, they may have been lashed together with string. And as you may recall, um, Boulder Cliff is also, also features the oldest string in the world, um, which was made out of uh, hemp or nettle. Um, so it could have been something like that that was keeping these planks all together. This is probably, well, this is certainly one of my favorite pieces. Um, <laughs> and again, it just looks like a, like a, a stick, you know, with the holes in it. So these are not, are not made from drills or anything like that. They're actually made from bivalves that were um, eating the wood while it was submerged. But if you look carefully here, right here, there is a curved line. And if you maybe look from the side, you can see that this was actually kind of, that there's a scoop mark in this wood. And also given the archeological context, which was um, right at the end of the very large tangentially split plank, um, which was about one meter long, this is again indicative of either the debris that was created possibly while in the course of making a log boat or could possibly have been some part of the, the log boat itself. All right, so these um, two very small pieces are a little bit harder to say one way or the other, where you, whether you would call them an artifact or an ecofact, but I lean strongly toward artifact because um, if you look closely, you can see little scallop marks here. And I think that these are probably um, places where uh, stone or maybe antler tools um, w went into the wood and were, were actually chipping pieces off. And so this would have been at a later stage of production um, where the, uh, yeah, the, whatever was being made, whether it was a log boat or something else, would have been um, being fine-tuned. Um, so yeah, these are, I, I think, uh, lovely little pieces. And the one other thing that I wanted to mention about these, these longer, uh, yeah, plank-like um, pieces is that some of them were converted radially. So you would think that, okay, the easiest way to get this kind of shape from a tree would be to take a small tree and then just cut it in half, which is, of course, called halving. But some of them were actually converted in a different way. In fact, most of them were converted in a different way so that they were actually taken from a larger tree and then the tree was quartered and then it was uh, the, the flat side would have been cut down from there. We're going to be going back starting on June 14th. And um, so we're, I'm fairly certain that we will have at least a couple more of these and maybe some other um, material that could be a little bit more conclusive as to what people were doing at this site at Boulder Cliff before it was submerged. Thank you.